thank you uh, am i audible right not audible okay uh, now okay thank you okay uh, good morning everyone uh, thank you all for coming to this talk i am ayush singh uh, from india and uh, i am currently majoring in computer science and engineering, uh, engineering and would be graduating next year so this talk uh, and i'm like currently working uh, at a research lab called swarat lab uh, in new delhi and the lab is basically working uh, on autonomous vehicles so and for the past few months i have been exploring this field of uh, bayesian deep uh, bayesian deep learning which has been quite a quite an active uh, research field and we will see that uh, why Uh, why is it so so uh, yeah okay so to start with uh so like the current state of our machine learning and deep learning uh, like models is that we are not able to uh, you know actually see so these models are not actually able to uh tell us about the uncertainty and uh, so so the main uh, so one of the main factors for these mo models are that we actually want to know that what these mo models don't don't understand and for the sa uh, for the same uh, what we have is uh, like the bayesian approach to the uh, to the deep learning and so the machine learning and so these uh, uh, machine learning and deep learning applications are like across uh, various fields in like self driving cars or uh, healthcare and along uh, along with which comes the uh, like so these are very critical applications and uh, so we have to be very certain about the uh, you know about the predictions or result or the outputs which uh, our models are giving and um, therefore we have to basically uh, tell uh, or uh, basically tell about the uncertainty uh, factor of these models so like this was the news from uh, i guess 2015 or 16 when this was the first fatal crash uh, of the tesla car and uh, so the main reason which uh, the car which uh, for uh, for the crash was that the car was not able to distinguish between the like a white tractor and then the white sky so like for these reasons uh, you know um, basically understanding the like the things which lead to this kind of uh, cases is very important yeah so this brings us to like what is uncertainty and uh, like why it is important so uncertainty basically that's the uh, you know the, the the dictionary meaning of the same and it says that when we are not you know 100% sure that what our output is or the state of being uh, uncertain and so in deep learning i will be uh, basically talking about uh, two major types of uncertainties which the first one is uh, like the aleatoric uncertainty and setting uh, second one is the uh, second one is uh, epistemic so in aleatoric uncertainty we tend to measure that what we cannot understand from our data so things like uh, like occlusion like cases with occlusion or lack of uh, you know uh, under or over exposed uh, areas in our data so we need to understand these things so you can see in this example that uh, you know the, these cars are kind of overlapping so we are uh, so like we are not very sure like these two cars are very uh, overlapping so we kind to uh, so we we have to you know take these things into account and uh, and the second type of uncertainty is the epistemic which uh, which tends to measure that what we are like the, uh, like what cases our model is not able to uh, you know uh, it's not able to train on so the main reason for the same could be the lack of uh, you know the training data for the same so this is a very good example for the same where we have these input images and so this is a image segmentation uh, example where every pixel is classified into certain uh, you know certain uh, classes and here you can see that uh, you know in this the aleatoric uncertainty over the borders of like these uh, like cars and the trees we can see that the model is quite uncertain uh, about the data because that's kind of uh, so like here we have kind of occlusions and stuff like that and then in epistemic uncertainty we can see that uh, in this part the footpath thing uh, like it's quite uncertain that whether it's a footpath because because this model is not trained for footpaths so it's quite certain about things like cars or 
you know, trees and stuff like that, but it's kind of very uncertain about the footpaths and all. So this is what we are aiming to, this is what we aim for uh, using this uh, application. Okay, so, so basically now what we want is a, so now what we want is something where we can, uh, you know, merge both these fields, the, the deep learning, and then we can basically bring the uncertainty thing. And for the same, what we have uh, is the Bayesian probability theory, which we will be using uh, along with the deep learning, which, uh, which combines to make the Bayesian deep learning uh, field. Okay, and uh, so, yeah, so before we move on to the Bayesian thing, so let's try to just uh, see the basic, uh, the conventional neural networks. So, so neural networks are nothing but, a, you know, a series of uh, linear transformations which can be uh, accomplished by simple matrix multiplications. So, so here we have, uh, so this function f basically multiplies the x matrix or x vector with uh, the wi weight vector and then uh, adds it to the b1 which, which is the bias, uh, like which you can see uh, using this figure like this gets multiplied to this, then we add uh, the bias to it and then we get the intermediate output which will then further uh, go on. So, so like we have things like tan h or relu which are simply like activation uh, layers or to bring the uh, non-linearity in our models. Yeah. Okay, so the one, uh, like the major thing which we have here is that we tend to have weights which are, uh, so we tend to uh, optimize the weights and learn weights which are very, uh, you know, these would be very discrete. So these would be very specific values, uh, a set of certain values for a particular deep learning model. But the main difference which comes in the Bayesian neural network is that instead of these, you know, discrete uh, weights and biases, we uh, we tend to uh, basically make a, you know, make a distribution over the. We try to learn a distribution over uh, these weights and biases. So instead of basically learning uh, like just 0 0.8 and 3.1, we will kind of uh, we will tend to, uh, you know, learn a, a distribution over these weights and biases. So. So like here, all these uh, weights and biases just turns into a, a, you know, a distribution, a probability distribution. Yeah. So now, at the very heart of these, uh, like the Bayesian probability theory, is the base, is the classical Bayes theorem, uh, which is like probability of A uh, given B is the probability of B given A into probability of A, and then divided by probability of B. So, uh, so these terms, so the like the main fundamental part is that we tend to learn. We tend to basically uh, propose a prior uh, for a particular case, and we then tend to modify it to, you know, reach to our posterior, which is the final output which we want. So the posterior is the uh, like the the probability distribution which we are trying to find, and then we have a prior, so it can be any uh, any distribution, a Gaussian or anything like that, and uh, likelihood is the. Uh, so it's the, like, basically what's the likelihood that given something, so given A, what is the likelihood that we are going to get B? And then this is the evidence, which is uh, probability of B. So when we see this in terms of, uh, you know, machine learning or, like, deep learning models, uh, what we have is the, the, like, the theta and D. So theta is the, these are basically the parameters which we are trying to uh, learn from our model. And then this is the data, which is the, like the input data, which whatever we have. And uh, yeah, again, so like these are the, like, like the uh, likelihood functions, prior probabilities, and then the posterior distribution, which we are trying to find. So in our case, uh, so like the main, uh, aim of when, whenever we optimize our deep learning model is that we have to optimize the like the parameters and the weights to a, like to reach a certain accuracy and so and so that's what that's the posterior distribution that we are like we are trying to find a probability distribution over our uh, you know over the, our parameters given the data and here we have the uh, like the prior probability which we assume like uh, so suppose we take a gaussian distribution with a, with a certain mean and variance for like all the weights and biases and yeah and so the major uh, problem with this 
like with the base theorem in terms of uh, in terms of like deep learning model is that is the is this term like p of d which is our evidence and it's just a constraint so now the problem is that uh, so this can also be written as uh, you know we we basically we we tend to find the probability distribution over our data or over our uh, like the input data uh, given whatever uh, like for all the like for all the parameters which we have so this tends to be an intractable problem because you know uh, so there would be infinite uh, distributions from which our data can be arrived so so this is one of the major problems which we you know which we have to solve when we are using uh, this uh, like when we are using bayes theorem for a particular case and for the same uh, what we uh, like to, to solve this we tend to uh, use some approximation uh, techniques which which will kind of do sampling over this particular uh, you know the input data and will try to give us an approximate value for this particular constant and uh, so for the same i will basically discuss two of these uh, so like this is uh, so this is pretty new which i would be uh, discussing in a bit detail and uh, this is a older one but again so this was derived from the uh, so the mc dropout was derived from the variational inference technique so in uh, yeah so in variational inference what we say is that uh, okay so so we have to find that probability distribution like the probability distribution of weights given our data so we tend to uh, you know take a, or assume a probability distribution which is q theta and our basically our aim is to optimize uh, like whatever we assume to the uh, to the to the final value which is the posterior distribution and for the same we take the kl matrix which is scale divergence which tells us that uh, you know how close or how uh, for for these distributions are so here we can see that uh, so uh, to optimize our parameters we tend to uh, like minimize this law the kl divergence loss for both both these uh, both these distributions and uh, so the problem with this was that uh, so this uh, when we train a model using the variational inference it tends to be a bit slow and uh, yeah so so it tends to be a bit slow so uh, so later one of the techniques which was uh, proposed i guess in 2000 uh, 2015 like june 2015 by yarin gal et al uh, was this monte carlo dropout technique so what they proposed was that uh, so they gave the theoretical finding that we can use dro dropout which is a very you know very very famous regularization technique used in uh, deep learning models to basically uh, you know basically find the variational kind of find the variational inference and uh, do uh, like uh, like find the posterior distributions over it and uh, yeah so be uh, before i move forward to the like the key idea behind this like why they were using dropouts by the way using dropout we will let's just see that how uh, like what dropout looks like so uh, okay so we use regularization techniques in uh, you know in base machine learning or like deep learning uh, models so that we don't uh, so that like the main uh, so that we don't overfit on our data which means that we are uh, like we try to generalize over our data and not so like the model uh, should generalize over the data not simply you know rote learn the like the input data which it has and for the same so so like we have these uh, layers with the neurons and every neuron is uh, like interdependent on each other and so what we do is that simply like randomly we drop some of the neurons from it so so like during our training phase um, for each iteration we basically ignore or simply zero out a random fraction uh, of the neurons from our model and then basically train the whole model for the same and uh, then during our testing phase uh, so during our testing phase the model would look like same like it uh, it will have all the nodes and we just have to like factor our weights and biases uh, with the like with the uh, whatever uh, fraction we took earlier so for example if uh, we take like if our fraction was 50 percent so initially during the training phase we will simply drop uh, you know 50% of neurons from a model and when we using uh, during the testing phase when we when we will 
uh, when we'll get the final logits or the you know the final output, we will just multiply all these with 0.5 uh, just to factor so that we take into account that we have uh, you know dropped some of the neurons earlier during the training phase. <coughs> Yeah, so the main uh, idea behind this, uh, like using dropout for uh, like f uh, for uh, like the variational inference, was that. So uh, like the authors said that. So suppose so like if we look at um, dropout technique, what we are doing is basically uh, you know it's like on or off. Um, uh, like we are either switching on a particular neuron or we are turning it off. So it's kind of a binary thing, so like zero or one. And uh, which can be seen, uh, which is very similar to the Bernoulli distribution, which says that, uh, so we, here we have only two instances, like x could be one or x could be zero. And if like probability for x is equal to one is p, then uh, like the probability for the second x is equal to zero will be one minus pr. So what they said was that in variational inference, uh, so like, uh, like in, yeah. So in variational inference, we were, uh, basically assuming a particular uh, you know a particular distribution which we were going to further optimize uh, so that it gets close to our the final distribution which we want and uh, so here that distribution would be a Bernoulli would be a Bernoulli distribution and uh, yeah so it would be uh, so the dropout could be used to perform the variational inference and so variational distribution is the uh, distribution which we assume which in our case would be a Bernoulli distribution so this was the kind of intuition uh, or the like the the idea which uh, like around which the like the paper revolved around but like it has quite an intensive math so like you can always look to this, uh, like this paper, which so they have a whole, uh, like they have proved everything, like why the dropout technique would tend to, you know, give us the same results as the variational inference. Okay, so uh, yeah, so finally. Uh, Let's just look at the uh, you know a simple code uh, snippet for uh, for uh, for implementing this mon uh, like MC dropout technique. So uh, here I have a, so the problem statement is that we have a simple uh, you know uh, we are using a simple model a Linnet model and which is a very basic one and we are applying this to the MNIST data set which is uh, which is like a which has uh, which is handwritten digit images around like 60,000 images with like uh, across 10 uh, across 10 you know classes uh, and so here simply uh, you can see that this uh, this is a basic uh, architecture which has two con layers then two fully connected layers and here you can see that uh, we apply dropouts to the both these layers with uh, like with a probability of like uh, with 20 percent we are uh, basically dropping out 20% of our uh, weights. And finally, like, so this code is in PyTorch, which is a deep learning framework uh, for implementing this. And so so here we simply, uh, so we basically we are defining our learning rate, then for all the batches we are, uh, so this is the data, like the input data and the target. Uh, this is the optimization, then uh, whatever our losses, and then simply we train or optimize, like it's a very basic training uh, step. And finally, uh, and finally uh, in the testing thing, so what we have to do is that uh, when we test, we basically take 10 samples, we, uh, sorry, 10, uh, like a variable amount of uh, iterations. So suppose we uh, take output for 20 cases and then we will basically find what's the mean and the variance for that particular, like for that particular iteration. Uh, sorry, like f for the whole model after, uh, so like uh, you can see that we take this as t is equal to 100. So for, uh, so for 100 iterations, we basically find the output which is the final logit layer and we simply calculate the mean and the variance which will give us the so like the higher the variance would be uh, it would mean that the uncertainty is uh, quite high and the lower it is which means that the model is quite confident uh, uh, 
for the same. And so finally, these were the outputs. So these are the outputs. So so this is the uh, like the two digit, which is uh, like so these four cases are very similar to the like the original two. So they have a very low variance here. And as we you know rotate these images, we see that the variance tends to increase, which which tells us that the answer like the model is uh, basically. Uh, getting uncertain about whatever predictions uh, it is ma it, it's making, and similarly uh, a case with uh, six. So like these are uh, the model is pretty confident about these uh, cases, and as we rotate them further, it gets uh, you know uncertain, and the variance tends to increase. And also I just forgot to mention one thing. So so like in. Uh, networks in any machine learning or deep learning networks uh, we get the probability like the final probability uh, as the output and it is uh, like that thing is different from uncertainty because so that that just tells us that uh, like um, so, uh, so, so suppose if we have two cla uh, three classes and it says that the the probability for first is 0 0.1 0 0.5 and then 0 0.4 so it's just a uh, distributing uh, so it's just telling that it's uh, like you know, 50% uh, uh, not certain, but it says that uh, it's uh, like the 50% probability is that this would be the uh, like this would be the class and like so on. Yeah, thank you. So the uh, so like I would be uh, putting uh, the whole code. Uh, so these were just some of the code snippets. You can always like visit this, and I would be putting all the references uh, which I used uh, while I was exploring this field uh, on this repo. Okay, so we have time for one quick question. Yes, uh, the results uh, which you presented were results with right? Yeah. So uh, how what exactly did the trial bring into the model? Have the result before because it's not clear how the dropout increased or diminished the, the, uh, the variance. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so the question is that uh, uh, so, like, what are the outputs before and after we are applying the drop? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, I don't have the like I don't have those images which were before uh, like which I so I uh, I basically. Uh, so I took the images uh, like before and after the dropout, but like in this slide, in these slides, I'm just showing the output after the dropout. So maybe I can like show you after the talk. So th these are after the uh, dropout, and uh, so before drop, so before dropout, we we won't be getting you know any uncertainty or variance thing. We would just be getting the probability, uh, like the probability for these particular. Uh, so so we have ten classes from like zero to nine digits. So we will be getting a probability. To distribute uh, like a probability for each class, uh, like before dropout, using before like dropout, yeah. So when we use dropout, we are just uh, you you know we are just doing a sampling thing. We take suppose uh, 10 or 100 outputs and then simply find the variance in them, uh, which tends to give us the uh, the uncertainty for that. Okay, so you know the the output like before dropout and the after dropout. Uh, yeah, so like, yeah, obviously the out... the variant because dropout is supposed to uh, make the model more generic. So it, it should, it's supposed to make the model learn uh, like a larger mm -hmm. uh, spectrum of, of input. But it's just, it's not clear how dropout... Uh, no, it, it's clear, the idea is clear that dropout should increase the uh, normal variance. But it's just, it's not very clear from the output that you've been showing. So uh, if you could uh, have shown just both yeah, sides, right. uh, it would be clear to, to see how it okay. affects mm -hmm, Yeah, right, right. It's, right. It's okay, yeah. Right, I agree. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I'm, I've not shown the case without dropout, and uh, so maybe I can, like, after the talk, we can, like, uh, I have the code, so we can maybe run without dropout and see that. Yeah. Thank you. So, like, thanks, Yeah. Thank you.